Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. We like to welcome all of you around the world to this Q&A question and answer session we have on Mondays. So today is very special once again that we are having the second part on the topic power of music, and even today we have Sister Teres. Uh, joining us and welcome sister, welcome to this program and thank you very much for joining us to answer many of our questions and especially very uh, intense uh, questions we have. Today is very important as well. So before we begin uh, today's program, let us have a word of prayer and I would like to invite Sister Teras to lead us in prayer. You may uh, pray in your language sister. Okay. Padre bendito que estás en los cielos, te damos gracias, Señor, por tus bendiciones. Gracias, Señor, por permitirnos alabar tu nombre con nuestras voces impuras. Te pedimos, Señor, que nos hagas instrumentos en tus manos, que nos tomes, Señor, para que podamos cada día hacer mejor música para alabar tu santo nombre. Bendice a cada uno de los hermanos que nos están escuchando alrededor del mundo. Te lo pedimos todo en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amén. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you, those who called me and uh, sent me text messages and uh, emails that thanking for this topic. And uh, it is really encouraging. And some questions we received as well. And some people called and asked some clarification on certain subjects. And I would like to encourage those who are tuning today's pro for today's program, you may uh, watch our first part of uh, power of music uh, to this topic as well it's second part and uh, you may uh, visit our website and uh, general conference website of the international missionary, missionary society seven day adventist church reform movement and you may find these videos there are very useful videos you find there and uh, among that you can get the q a the question and answer session and the topic we had was power of music part one so today, part two, we are going to have, and uh, sister, as usual, I'd like to ask you, are you ready to answer the questions? <laughs> With the Lord's help, we are going uh, to try some questions we may not um, um, uh, answer today because of the time, so we can answer them um, later. Sure, yes. Today, we have a very important question, and I mentioned that last uh, session as well. And uh, the question goes, the question is very short and very simple, but the answer is very long and uh, intense. And the question is, use of drums in the church. Are we allowed to use drums? And I like to add uh, some more elaboration to this uh, topic or, or the drums. People were asking us about clapping and uh, maybe drum machines and these days they are talking about electronic drums and so many uh, you know instruments alike so we include everything and we put under the subheading of drums and sister the time is for you please explain to us how it works and how we understand this question Okay, so thank you very much for your questions, my brother. So this, I know a lot of people are um, um, <laughs> waiting for this answer. Um, it has been a very difficult topic for, not only for our church, but for a lot of churches um, also. And um, I know, my brother, that some of the things we are going to say today, they are not so popular, okay? So people who are going to listen to this, they are going to say these people are crazy. Why that, do they think in that way? But um, we know my brothers and sisters that we are not um, trying to uh, um, um, like uh, be likable to people. We are praising our God. And as God wants that, um, his praise to be different from the other music that is um, done in the world. So um, the, the problem here is not whether you like the music or not. 
it is whether God likes the music you sing for him or not. So that is the main question here. And um, we, we don't have to like that music. Oh, I don't like the music. It sounds boring. It, it, it doesn't sound boring to, to God's ears. So he, 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 we are going to um, 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 talk about this um, in today's um, in today's questions and answers, okay? So I, the first thing I want to do is share um, uh, share here some couple of texts, brothers. If you can help me to read them, please. Okay, we are talking. Uh, okay, the, the the first verse is from Second Chronicles. Chapter 29, verse 26. And the Levites stood in the with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. And First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 42, we read, and with them Herman and Jeduthan with trumpets and cymbals for those that should make a sound and with musical instruments of God and the sons of Jeduthun were porters. And First Chronicles chapter 23 verse 5 we read, Moreover, 4,000 4, were porters and 4,000 praised the Lord with the instruments which I made, said David, to praise David. Thank you, my brother. So as we read here, um, it Bible says, but because the, the, uh, there are a lot of people who says, okay, we, we can't use any kind of instrument in church. So Bible says that it was allowed to play instruments in, in the temple that, that David uh, 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 and Solomon created there, but they were only played by the Levites, okay? So this is something very important to know. First thing, the Levites stood with the instruments of David. There were a, a special group of people designed for playing the instruments in the church. It was not allowed to another people to come with instruments. Oh, I have here a guitar. I want to play with you. And oh, yes, come in and just play. No, they were people who were assigned just for be musicians, just for that. They had an, another another um, uh, um, um, task. They were just uh, musicians, okay? So this is something very important that tell us that um, just the the, the uh, Levites, okay, those who were um, consecrated to to work in the temple, were allowed to play this those in, uh, musical instruments. And I want to share something with you. When I was uh, a little in, in the last um, uh, in the last question and answer that we made in the last program, um, I told you I, I was studying music from very young age, and my father was a pastor of our church. So um, I once a time I just wanted that um, I, I had a, a teacher, music teacher, who was a Christian. He was a Christian music teacher. And uh, I wanted him to come to my church. And I told him, oh, 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 teacher, do you want to come to my church? And he said, oh, yes, I can come to your church. So I invited him for a, a Saturday in the afternoon, okay, for a special youth program. So my music teacher was there in, in, in the church. My father was in that time. And some brother of theirs said, okay, let us introduce uh, um Caress the visit who is here with us, and I told him, "Oh, yes, he's a music teacher from school music and everything." And so this brother said, "Oh, brother, you are also a musician. Can you play something for us?" So my music teacher um, go in in the front. And this this actually happened in, in in my church. So he goes in the front there and says, "Okay, let us praise the Lord." So he, he uh, um, uh, put a, a guitar in, uh, in his hands and he started to sing. And then he started to um, <laughs> like talk to the people, okay, let's put our hands together and let's praise God again. 
So the people were like looking at each other. They didn't know what to do in that time. And so they like, do we do this or do we do not now? And they look at me. I, I didn't know where I could hide because I was so embarrassed that that was happening in my church. And so the teacher saw that the people from the church, they were like not responding in the way he was. And so he said, oh, what happened with people here? It's not like, like you haven't eaten your chicken soup today. Oh, well, come on. And I did, okay, this teacher doesn't know that we are all vegetarians here. So it was such an embarrassment experience for the teacher and for myself and for the church. I told the teacher uh, uh, after he he uh, he finished his performance there and, and um, he was just shocked. And I told him, okay, uh, teacher, we, we praise here in a different way. We are vegetarians and everything that he had done there was very wrong. What's, everything was different from what we did at our church. So it is very important, brothers and sisters, don't invite people to play in your church that are not from our church, okay? This is something very important and that this, this we know about the, um, the, the Levites that David had uh, to play instruments. Don't invite people to play in the church. You not pay for people to play in the church. Okay, we have a, a, a conference, okay? And we are going to hire uh, musicians from the world to play in this in this in this program. No, no, brothers and sisters, no. Why not? Because these people are not consecrated. They are not going to play the music that God wants to play you in church. They are going to bring just the music from the world. They are going to bring it to your church, and instead from being a, a benefit, a blessing, it will be. The, the exact opposite, okay? So this is very, this is the first principle that we have here, and it is very important that we know this. Now, another um, text that I want to share is this one, brother, if you can help me with the reading, the first one is in Spanish, and then the second um, um, paragraph is in English. Yeah, it, it reads as, um, music should have beauty, pathos, and power. Let the voices be lifted in songs of praise and devotion. Call to your aid, if practicable, instrumental music, and let the glorious harmony ascend to God, an acceptable offering. Okay, so from what Sister White is, is talking about here, and, and something I want to add also, is that in the um, prophet schools, in the school of prophets, they learned music also. Sister, I, I don't have the text here, but um, Sister White says that uh, one of the um, subjects they learned in the, in the school of prophets was music, because it was very important to know how to play um, um, an instrument, okay? So um, here, in, in this text that you have to read for us, brother, it says that music should have beauty, pathos, and power. Those three things are very important. And Sister White says that you have to call to your aid, if it's practical, instrumental music, okay? So the principal thing that has to be in the phrasing is the voice. The instruments, are just like helping the voice so it can be more harmony to praise God, okay? If the instrument you are using for praise God are louder than the voice, you are doing it wrong. It is not a good thing because our voices has to be the principal, um, uh, the, the principal uh, thing that, that has to be uh, listening, okay, in the um, in, in the song. I have another text that I want to um, share with you, my brother, if you can help me here, please. Yeah, once again, it's from the Spirit of Prophecy, and we read, Thus music was made to serve a holy purpose, to lift the thoughts to that which was pure and noble and elevating and to awaken in the soul devotion and gratitude to God. 
Look how, how beautiful is this. The purpose of the music was, and it has to be today also, serve a holy purpose. Lift the thought to what which was pure and noble and elevating and awake in the soul devotion and gratitude to God. If you listen to the music that are today, that are the trends today, the music is not noble, not elevated, and it doesn't awake your soul to devotion and gratitude to God. It's, it's like the, uh, everything wrong there. If you listen to the words, if you listen to the kind of music they are playing, the trend today is just glorify your body, just glorify sex, just glorify drugs, just glorify uh, um, everything that is wrong in, the, in this world is uh, uh, glorified through the music that is um, today playing. So um, that kind of music, you can't use it for glorify God also because it's music uh, that glorifies another thing. So my brother, if you are playing a hymn from our hymnal, for example, but you don't feel that that music that you are playing elevates your soul, you are doing it wrong, okay? If the, mu if the instruments you are using to praise God with a hymn are distracting you from elevate you, your soul, to, it, to, to something that is pure and noble and elevating, you are doing it wrong, okay? So this is very important also, this, this, um, this principle that, that, that the music has. So in the, um, in, the, in the text that we have read now, we have this, um, uh, this conclusion, okay? Sacred music should result in a serious and solemn impression on the people who are listening to us. We, we talk about this in, um, in the first program we did, okay? So, if your music is not main, making a solemn impression on the people who are listening to you, you are doing it wrong. If, if you are playing or if you are singing and the people are not listening to the song but listening to you, and looking at you as their main um, uh, worshiping objective, you are doing it wrong. Second one, religious worship should be dignified, solemn, and impressive. Three, music should be perfect, soft, and sweet. Four, music should have beauty, pathos, and power. Five, music should produce glorious harmony. Six, music should serve a holy purpose. Seven, music should lift the thoughts to what which is pure and noble and elevating. And eight, music has to awaken in the soul devotion and gratitude to God. So when you are going to play an instrument, my brother, my sister, if you have a group of instruments in your church, ask you if you are understanding this topic. Talk with your musicians about these topics here because all our music has to have this purpose. And if they are not having these purposes, we are doing everything wrong. Okay? <clears throat> now, one last um, um, text of Sister White before we start to share another um, topic here. Okay, it reads as there is something peculiarity sacred in the human voice it's it's harmony and to subdue an heaven inspired pathos uh, exceeds every musical instrument vocal music <laughs> is one vocal music Vocal music is one of God's gifts to men, an instrument that cannot be suspended or equaled when God's love abounds in the soul, singing with the spirit and the understanding also is a great addition to devotional service in the house of God. Thank you, my brother. So there is something peculiarly sacred in the human voice. 
it is not just about um, uh, singing like something uh, um, without thinking it, okay? It is singing with a purpose. And it is very important that you have to sing with understanding, okay? So um, um, in the text that Brother Love read it to us, it says that vocal music is one of God's gifts to men. God has given this gift to us. He has given the, the gift of praise Him, of singing to Him, okay? So it is sacred. It, there is something peculiarly sacred in the human voice. But as, as you can use your voice to praise God, you can use it also to praise the enemy. Okay, so be aware, my brother, of how you uh, use your talents that God has given. Okay, so now we are going to enter in the um, in the main topic of today, and and I I don't want to talk just about the drums. I I just want to make my uh, my topic clear. And before we start with the instruments, I want to ask um um I want I want you to look um, at something here. So, tool or weapon, let us ask about some things that we have at home that we use, and let me ask if they are tool or weapon. What is a tool? A tool is a device or implement, especially one held in the hand, used to carry out a particular function, okay? Second one, weapon. A thing, uh, uh, what is a weapon? It is a thing designed or used for inflicting bodily harm or physical damage. Okay, so one same thing, it can be used as a tool or as a weapon. It depends on who is using it. For example, okay, so we have this first uh, thing here on screen. It is a knife. Okay, so you can ask yourself, is a knife or tool or a weapon? Okay, so it can be both. And what depends this? It depends on the people who are using it. For example, if I use it in the kitchen for cook, I can make a, a, a lot of delicious uh, meals with a, a, a knife. But if, if, if this knife is in the wrong hands, it can kill people. It can do physically um, huh. harm to some people. Yes. So you have to be very careful when using it because if you are using it with a good purpose, you can inflict harm to yourself also if you don't know how to use it. That is why we avoid to give knives to our children, to our small children, because they don't know how to use it. So this one, is a, a tool but can be a weapon also and if you don't know how to use it correctly you can inflict harm to yourself also so you have to be very careful on what purpose do you give to this tool okay that can be also a, a weapon okay we have another one here Do you see this, my brother? Yeah, it's an axe. It's an axe. What do you think? It, it will be a tool or a weapon? I could say both. Yes, yes. What for do we use an axe? We use it for cut trees, for example, for build beautiful houses. But if this same axe is in the wrong hands, it can use for just cutting a leg out or cutting a head out of, of, of or, 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 or make harm to a people. And this is very dangerous on um, tool also. It can be a very, very good tool, but it can be a very dangerous weapon in yes. the wrong hand. Okay? Yes. So both you can use it in, in, in both ways. It can be a tool or it can be a weapon. Again, it depends on who is using it. Now, what do we say? about this one so i could say it is a sim it can harm someone as well as a weapon 
Yes, yes. It is a tool, but it can also inflict harm to, to, to yourself. If you are using it as a tool, for example, uh, like me that I, I don't know how to use this kind of things. And always when I try to hammer in the wall, yeah, I always um, um, give my, my fingers are hurting then. So I say, well, I don't like to use these things. Okay, so it can be a tool. It can be a weapon also in the wrong hands. You can kill a people. You, you can kill someone with a, with a hammer. So it is very dangerous also, and you have to use the tool, this tool, you have, you can use it, of course you can use it, and, but you have to be careful on the way um, how you are using it, because you, you can have the, uh, uh, the good purpose. I, I want to use it to put this, this um, nail, nail, nail on the wall. Yes. But in that process, I can inflict harm to myself. So that is why you have to be very careful when using this uh, uh, this tool that can be a weapon also, okay? Now, I, we, I, we, I have another one here. Now we are talking about another different thing here. What is this, brother? Do you know this 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 tool? Yeah, it is actually like a long knife or a sword. But in some countries, I think they use it to cut the shrubs and small uh, bushes to clear the way. Yes, yes, and it's called machete. Here in South America, it is very popular. Okay, so um, uh, the the. Um, the people who works in the in in the forest and um like uh, um uh, the word is um yeah when people go in the in the, in, in the woods or in the in the forest they use this to clear their way yes so the people uh, who uh, uh, um, um, works there the farmers all of them have this tool that has the, the name is machete and they, they, they even use it all the time when they are working outside. So they have like a, 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 um, in, in, in their belly here, like something to, to uh, um, um, keep the, the machete there. So when they walk, they don't harm themselves, but it is right there uh, in, in the place of the right hand. So they can just, uh, if they have an emergency with a snake, or some animal, they can just uh, cut out whatever it is. No, this tool, it is a very dangerous tool. It can be used as a weapon also. It can inflict as a lot of harm, okay? But yeah. it is a tool also, but it is a very dangerous tool. It is not like, for example, the hammer that you can, yeah, you can, uh, when you are hammering some, some, um, something, you can just uh, make a little harm to your fingers. This, this tool here is not something like that. This is very dangerous tool. You can cut a finger with a machete. I, I, I myself, I almost cut a, 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 my leg when I was uh, younger and I wanted to use this thing. And I, of course, didn't know how to use it well. So I tried to cut a tree and this machete comes back and uh, cut my, my, my feet and uh, it, it, I was bleeding there and uh, um, they had to take me to the emergency room and put some um, uh, um, seed oil. Oh, yes, so it was horrible. So this is a very dangerous tool. Mm -hmm. It is not uh, just something, uh, uh, well, it, it cannot be made uh, so much harm. Yes, it is a tool, but it is very dangerous too. So uh, you have to take very much care of on how you are using it if you want to use it in a very good purpose. But of course, in the wrong hands, it can easily kill somebody. It can easily convert in a weapon. So you have to be very careful with this. Now, what do you say about this, my brother? Is this a tool or a weapon? It is a weapon, definitely. It is a weapon. Definitely. There is no way I can use this as a tool. For what, for example? For, 
for, for, for baking a bake in the ground? For, for what I am going to use this as a tool? It is a weapon, okay? And a weapon, for what do we use a weapon? Yeah, it is a it is a weapon that we can. I mean, killing people and making harm. I think this is a dangerous weapon. I could say. The the purpose of a weapon is kill. Yes. There is not there there is there is not any other purpose in a weapon. Okay, but what can we say about this? Okay, this is a toy weapon. So because it is a toy weapon, can I or or my son in my case? Can I buy him a toy weapon so he can play like with, with a toy like this? I think Spirit of Prophecy warns us that not to not to give these kind of toys to our children. Very clear. Yes, and you know why not, brother? Because they get used to them. So when they are going to pick a real um, 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 a real gun, they are not going to think about anything about it because they have always played with the same thing and they are going to think like, oh, this is a game, also I can kill people easily. And the same happens with the video games. When you are used to play video games and to kill everybody on a screen, it is very easy to go out and kill 30 people in a school. Look at all the shooters you have there in the United States. People, they are crazy. They just pick up a gun and go to a school and kill everything out because they, 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 just, they just want to, to, do, to do that. It's, it's a crazy thing. What happened with these people? They got used to it in video games. At their homes, they have access to a gun. So it is a weapon and it is going to kill people. Okay? So there is no way people can tell me, oh, oh no, I have a weapon at home. Oh yes, but I use it just for putting holes in the in the in the wall when I want to um, um, you know, put um, something I, I want to uh, put there in the wall. No, my brother, that is not the purpose of the weapon. It is a weapon and it will kill people. Now here at home, we have uh, we have that, that that thing that I don't allow my boy. My I have a five year old uh, son. And I don't allow him to play with guns, even if they are like toys. I don't buy him any toys, any gun, and I don't allow him to play. But uh, uh, recently, he surprised me by making his own gun. And he showed me with his Lego bricks, and he told me, oh, mommy, look at this. I created a ship, and this ship has a very big gun. And I told him, Sebastian, we have talked about this very much. Why do you make a gun with your, your, with your own hands? And he told me, oh no, mommy, you are understanding it wrong. This gun is not for kill people. Mm -mm. This gun has special bullets <laughs> that when they get to the uh, sea, they rescue people from the sea. And I told him, okay, Sebastian, there is no way a bullet can rescue someone. A bullet is to kill people. This is a weapon and it will kill people. So don't get used to it. Don't play with guns because you are going to uh, uh, get harmed or you can harm some people. So uh, what about this one, for example? And this is the last example I am going to give. Is this a tool or sorry? Is this a tool or is this a weapon, brother? What do you say? Oh, sorry. Here it is. It is there. Yeah, it is definitely a weapon, sister. It's a very dangerous multi-barrel, uh, you know, launcher, I could say, it's used in the wars. Yes, and this is, this is a, a um, thermobaric weapon or vacuum bombs and uh, they are designed and created for, for uh, create the more harm possible to the more a uh, uh, lot of people possible. It's it's a very horrible thing. This this yeah, it is for destruction. Destruction, yes, yes, it is. It has been created for destruction. Uh, the most uh, possible um, um, thing in, in in the minor possible of time. 
So this is a weapon and there is no way someone can tell me, oh, I am going to buy something of this. Oh, it is just to transport uh, um, um, something heavy from here to here. And I am going to buy something of this to transport that that is heavy. No, my brother, this thing is not for transport anything. This thing is for kill people, for destroy. It is a weapon and, it, and a weapon should it be. And you should treat it like a weapon, okay? Now, with the musical instruments, my brother, it, it happens exactly the same. They can be a tool or they can be a weapon depending on the hands that are playing them. And I'm going to give the first example here. Do you know what is this, my brother? Yeah, it's a grand piano. It's a grand piano. So you look at this thing, at, the, at this grand piano, and you, you see it, oh, so beautiful piano. And you think, okay, this is a tool. There is no way that we can use this as a weapon. Yes, my brother, you can use it as a tool or you can use it as a weapon. How is it possible? Let us listen to this. And I am put you, I'm going to put you a first example. This is my good friend, um, Makoto. He lives in Canada. He's from Japan, but he lives in Canada. And he's a very good musician. And he plays the piano so beautifully. And I want you to listen to this. Yeah, it is a guitar. It is a guitar, and you say, oh, a guitar, that is so nice instrument. You can use it uh, as a tool. There's no way you can use it as a weapon. And I tell my brother, you can use it as a tool or you can use it as a weapon. It depends always on who is playing it. For example, let us listen to this. It, 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 it,
makes you more agitated, okay? So uh, uh, always depends on who is playing the instrument. That is it, that that is why um, David has had just Levites to play instruments because he knew the dangers of the of the instruments. What do you say about this, my brother? You know this instrument. It is a trumpet, I believe. It's a trumpet, yeah. And I, I don't know if you have had the opportunity to listen to Pastor Danilo. Danilo, yes, yes, yes. The, yeah, he plays trumpet very well, and his son as well. Yeah. Oh, yes, and his son also. This trumpet, it is not easy. It's not an easy instrument to play. Because if, if you are just learning, I, I don't know if you have had the opportunity of listening to a, a person who is just learning the trumpet, and it's something horrible to listen to. Oh, I have experience, yes, sister. Oh, yes, okay. So you know about the, uh, what I'm talking about. So if you don't know how to play this trumpet, don't bring it to the church. It, it will be like hot to the, the, uh, the ears of the people who are listening. And they, their souls are not going to be elevated to God, okay? Um, but, but we are talking about the good using of a trumpet, for example. And I want you to listen to this. Beautiful, beautiful sound of a trumpet playing beautifully, but I, a person who really knows how to play um, a, a trumpet. But the same trumpet, I can use it not as a tool, but as a weapon. And how can I use a, a tool as a weapon in church? If I bring into the church the music that other people plays with the trumpet, for example, like this. So this music is salsa, and the trumpet is a very important instrument in the salsa music. And this is music that we use for dance. There's no way you can use this music to, to, to praise God. It is it's music for, for dancing. It is music for, for drinking. It's music for, for yes, it, it is not for, for um, um, it's not something solemn, okay, as, as music should be. And it is this exactly the same trumpet as we heard in the, in the first example. It is not a trumpet that is different. No, 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 it's the same trumpet. Always, my brothers, is not who is uh, not about the instrument. It is about who is playing this instrument. Now, I have another example here. Look at this, my brother Douglas. What do you think about this? It's a harp. It's a harp, yes. And um, um, the Bible tells us that David had a, not a harp exactly like this, that his was smaller, but with his harp, he could go away the demons that was in Saul's body. You remember that, 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 um, uh, that story that the Bible tells us, okay? So let us listen to um, um, an example of a harp using as a tool. Amazing grace.
okay, this is from local Colombian music, and this is the same harp, but it is using in a way that is that, that doesn't, doesn't calm your spirit. Okay, it is another kind of music. So you can't just mix things together. Okay, this music you can use it for praise uh, the demon there at, 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 at the world, but you can also use it for praise God in church. There are uh, different things, and you have to um, um, you have to know that, and you have to use it in different in different ways. Now let us go to this one. What do you say? What, what is this? Is my brother Douglas? This is an electric guitar. This is an electric guitar. How if I tell you, my brother? And li listen to this example. How great, so uh, beautiful. And this is an electric guitar. What you are listening to, Brother Douglas, is an electric guitar. Yes. What happened with the electric guitar? This, let me explain to you very quickly here. I don't know if I can uh, like um, draw in the screen. It, it seems as not. Okay, but this, uh, do you see my pointer? My pointer? Yes. It's okay. So this electric guitar has a lot of ways of playing it. Okay? And it depends always on the microphones that are activated. So I, I don't play professionally. I don't know how to play the, the, the electric guitar, but I, I, I have to um, read a little bit about it. So um, here you have microphones, here microphones, here microphones. And here you have a small tool where you can move it upside or down. And depending on the, the place where it is put, it, this thing, it gives different um, sounds. So this sound here is from an electric guitar, yes. And it is beautiful, yes. <laughs> church oh yes really let me tell you something my brother the electric guitar can sound like that but the electric guitar can sound also like this let me You can see it as a machete. 
is very, very dangerous. And the only thing that it doesn't sound like this is when you are using it like the first example. And in order to use it like the first example, you can use an acoustic guitar. So why do you want to have something so dangerous when you can when you can't use the whole uh, um, um, uh, the whole instrument in all the possible ways that it has? Do you understand what I mean, Brother Douglas? Yeah, it is it is very clear because it it actually it, it clogs the mind and it brings confusion to the mind because because the words are not going into the brain and we are not concentrating on the on that because it is getting disturbed it is getting disturbed and uh, the mind is getting disturbed when we are doing the worship i think that is the most dangerous part in this when you are playing yes. the electric so guitar maybe with the arm me, and sustain yes so if you ask me i wouldn't have this guitar electric guitar in my church because there is no way possible that you can use it as a, a, a good tool okay you can you can use it yes but this is not the purpose of the instrument. And if just something like so small, you can change the sound so bigly. And it is very dangerous to have. I, I wouldn't buy a, a guitar electric, a, a electric guitar for my son, for example. Why? Because in order to him to learn this instrument, he are going to play a lot of music that has nothing to be with praising of God. So you know what kind of music they use this guitar for. This is rock, this is metal, all that, and, and there are um, music that doesn't praise God. It prays just another things. So it is a very, very dangerous instrument. So if, if why do you want to bring dangerous things to your church? Why? If you if, if you just can't use it like a guitar, um, um, acoustic guitar, then have an acoustic guitar and play an acoustic guitar, and, and you will uh, you will not have that dangerous thing in in your church. And uh, now let us talk about this, <laughs> and we are getting now here. What is this, my brother? You know. Yeah, it's set of drums, set of drums yes. and uh, yeah, the bass drum, no. side drum and uh, so many others. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the drums like one instrument, okay? Before this, this uh, set of drums existed as we know it today, there were a lot of musicians that played different kind of instruments. So there was one musician for for the um, I I forgot the names in, in English. But I uh, one musician for each instrument here. If you know here, you have a lot of instruments. You have drums, and you have this. Uh, I'm going to look for the name um, right now. And um, there were different musicians that plays this uh, all all this kind of instruments. And they, they put it all together so just one musician could um, um, play all of them. Now I'm going to talk about drums like this instrument, one instrument, okay? It is one drum. Now, can we say that we can use this as a tool or is this a weapon? Now I ask you, my brother Douglas, in what Worlds, can we use this thing as a tool? I don't know if you have uh, have the opportunity to listen to uh, a drum, um, uh, or like an, uh, in in, um, uh, in 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 Spanish we say in vivo, um, playing playing live. So I I have had the opportunity to listen to it. It is a very big instrument. And it is so, so loudly that it is not for playing, for example, in, in, in small places. Now, our churches are not, they are not big churches. Imagine yourself, my brother, if you bring something like, big like this to 
your church. With all those instruments, all those drums and all those things, how do you think the people of your church are going to listen to the words you are going to say? There is no possible way that people can listen to you if you are playing an instrument like this. Why not? Because the, the, the noise that this big instrument is doing, it is distracting your mind of everything. It has not been created to give harmony. It is a, a, a just to give rhythm to the music. Okay? Now, people can say, oh no, but you can have um, um, like uh, very uh, um, soft drums and you can sing with soft drums. Oh yes, you can. And let me ask you, I, I have here a, a, a basic a uh, drum beat, a uh, drum beat, and this is, is, is this. This is very soft. No, if I can, I can sing. Shall we gather at the river? Okay, just with a piano. Drums um, has been created. 
created with a very, very dark purpose. And what is that purpose be? To communicate uh, with the, our ancestors. If you, if you see the, uh, the drums, that are, they are put in the ground, okay? And that is because people are buried in the ground and from there, the, um, uh, the, the energy of, the, of our ancestors, they come about there, of, uh, the drums are put in the, in the floor, in the ground, they come to us and then we can feel that rhythm in ourselves. And can you see this example? These are drums. Okay, African drums. And now, in a lot of cultures, these drums, they are using just, just drums with no other instruments, just drums. People can just get uh, um, in contact with ancestors, die uh, people who, who were uh, died a lot of years before them, and they 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 possess these people, and then they are coming dancing around and in circles, and they throw themselves in the ground, and you can see um oh the, uh, their their um, um grandfather that has passed away a lot of time before it has possessed these people. These things happen actually. Yeah. And if you see in the is that use this instrument, you will see exactly the same. And they say, oh no, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. It is not the power of no Holy Spirit because God doesn't um, make his presence in, 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 uh, in disorder. Yes. Doesn't God make disorder? Yeah, it reminds me, sister, there is a Bible text in, in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 26. Ezekiel 22, 26 is very clear with this. And, and it says, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned my holy things. They have put no difference between the holy, holy and profane. Neither they have showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbaths and I am profane among them. So this is uh, talking about clean and unclean and uh, you know a person who is coming from the east and from asia and uh, with that background with lot of paganism around every pagan uh, religion in the east and their worships always they use drums loud music and drums they use in their worship so are we going in that direction is a question that as you explained exactly and uh, are we going in that ancestral worship and uh, and uh, we, we we invite these dead people or whatever the way they think and we are not making a difference between good and bad we are not making a difference between holy and unclean so this is very important what you explained yes now i want to share it's very important what you said my brother um this if, if you listen to um these drums when they are playing, the purpose of this is like um, 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 distracting the mind so badly and, and to um, uh, take the, the body to another level. Yeah, kind of a trance. Yeah, trance. Yeah, that is, that, that is the word. Trance. Okay. So I don't want to bring this to my church. I don't want to see people dream, the, the, the flying around in anything like this. It is very dangerous. This is a weapon and as a weapon should it be seen. Now, there is a text here and we are going to read uh, just a couple of ones that um, explain us a little bit more. So this is one and I want to read it. It says, how often in our day is the love of pleasure disguised by a form of godliness, a religion, and listen very good to this, that permits men while observing the rites of worship to devote themselves to selfish or sensual gratification is as pleasing to the multitudes now as is in the as is in the, in the days of israel and there are still pliant errands who while holding positions of authority in the church will yield to the desires of the unconsecrated and those encourage them in sin 
read this thing here, it says that not when, when we are um, uh, in, in a worship, we are devote ourselves with sexual gratification. It is something as the same as the, uh, the people of Israel did when um, Moses went to the mount to look for the, um, uh, the commandments. Remember Aaron? Aaron stays with the congregation and he had to uh, be aware of the people and, and, and everything. But he just, uh, people there get uh, got crazy that they want to uh, get back to Egypt. And what was the first thing they did? They made another god from gold, okay? And they started to um, um, praise this, this new god. And, and, and the kind of music that they use here in, in, in this day, it, it, it has nothing to do with the kind of music they did to worship. Because that kind of music elevates your soul. It is something very, very different. And nowadays, it says there are still errors who, while holding positions of authority in the church, will yield to the desires of the unsecrated, unconsecrated and thus encourage them in sin. There are unconsecrated musicians in our church. My brother, my sister, ask yourself if you are an unconsecrated musician. Or if you are a consecrated musician and you want to adore God. Do you want to pleasure yourself? Do you want to give yourself a sensual gratification? There are some instruments that can give you that. But that doesn't mean that God allows them, that God uh, that, that feels uh, good receiving that kind of, of, um, of, of worship, okay? Now, another text here, and, and this is, this is uh, um, something very um, good here. It, it um, describes a, a situation. Brother Dumas, if you can help me with the reading, please. Yes. The view of one such company was presented to me where were assembled those who professed to believe the truth. One was seated at the instrument of music and such songs were poured forth as made the watching angels weep. There was mirth, there, there was coarse laughter, there was abundance of enthusiasm and a kind of inspiration. But the joy was such as Satan only is able to create. This is an enthusiasm and infatuation of which all who love God will be ashamed. It prepares the participants for unholy thought and action. I have reason to think that some who were engaged in that scene heartily repented of the shameful performance. Yes. Now, here in this text, Sister Y doesn't send the instrument. Now, if you say, if you read this in a different way, you can, you can read it. One was seated playing a piano and such songs were put forth as made the watching angels weep. There was mirth, there was coarse laughter, there was abundance of enthusiasm and a kind of inspiration, but that was not the inspiration that God gives us. So, again, there are some instruments that can be used as a, as a, a tool, or but they can use also, they can use as a weapon. So ask yourself, my dear musician, if you are consecrated enough to play in church and to play it right. Because you can't bring music from the world and place it in the church. It is not for that. Everything that gets your mind distracted from the worshiping to God um, has not been um, allowed in our churches. Now, you can say, okay, well, then we are not going to allow any instruments, just choirs and just voices. Let me read something to you. My brother, can you help me here, please? Yes. And here we read, I was taken into some of your singing exercises and was made to read the feelings that existed in the company, you being the prominent one. There were petty jealousies, 
envy, evil surmisings and evil speaking. The heart service is what God requires. The forms and lip service are as sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. Your singing is for display, not to praise God with the spirit and understanding. The state of the heart reveals the quality of the religion of the professor of godliness. Now, if you are talking, we are talking here of people who were just singing, okay? And, and God doesn't allow, uh, uh, doesn't receive it worshiping also. Why? Because people who were singing, they were doing it for display, not to praise God with the spirit and understanding. So you can play an instrument thinking you are praising God, but you want all the attention for you. You are playing this for, uh, you are uh, playing an instrument for display, not to praise God. Okay, so please be aware of how we use the instruments or the talents that God has given us. Now, you are going to say, uh, uh, people can say, okay, so we, we are not going to have drums in the church, but I am going to record a CD and I'm going to put some drums in it. Okay, I, I, am, I am talking again about drums as an instrument, the, 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 the instrument that we saw in the picture. What is the problem with the drums? Now, if you see my brother Douglas, um, music are organized in measures, okay? So each measure has a, 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 um, a strong time and a weak time. For example, in, the, um, in, in a measure of two, okay, you have one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That kind of organization of the measures, okay, if, if, if you sing uh, um, in a song that it is organized one, two, one, two, okay, you can, you can sing it. What is the problem with the drums? They always um, plays uh, the, the uh, let me look for the highlight, the second, in, in this case, uh, in this mission we are talking about they highlight the second uh, um, uh, time, those that are not supposed to be uh, uh, the, the 41, but the low one. So instead of being one, two, one, two, it is going to be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That changing of the, um, of the measure of the of the of the yes of the measure, it brings immediate um, movement to your your brain, because it is not organized as it should be because it, it's different. One two one two one two. Let let me uh, put you again the 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 um, the drum here. So this is this is a four uh, measure. So it, it should be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you listen to this, it is organized in a different way. One, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And when you do this, you are um, changing the whole measure organization and your brain gets distracted by the rhythm. This happens with the, with, with, with the instrument called drums. So in, in every way that you see it, it is a, it is a weapon that should not be used in our, um, in our services. Now, a last thing that I want to add because we are, we are just uh, out of time. And I know there are a lot of question more, but uh, we will need another program, my brother. You will, you will see that people are going to say, oh, but church music is so boring. Oh, yes, but there are people who says healthy food tastes ugly. Who says that healthy food tastes ugly? The people who eat junk food. They're going to say healthy food tastes ugly. So if you think, my brother, that church music is boring, you need to review what are you listening at home. 
But because if you are eating junk food, obviously you are not going to like the broccoli. Okay? For example, another people says, oh, I don't like to read the Bible. Of course, my brother, ask yourself after to read a novel, if you are going to have the desire to read the Bible. Uh-uh, it doesn't work that way. So you have to prepare your mind, your tastes, so that they can change completely. And this is something the Holy Spirit do to us because we are human beings. We like the world. We, are, we like the things that are in the world because Satan has made those things to be attractive to us, attractive to the youth. The youth like this kind of music of the world. The youth like the drums and, and, and all the, 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 um, the um, sounds and um, noises on, uh, about there. And, and, and you just quit all of these noises and all of these drums and you live with sacred music and they say, oh, but that music is boring. Oh, yes, of course, it will sound boring if you just listen to other kind of music. Pray to God so they can change your tastes for food, for readings, and for music. And I just want to read again, my brother, the text that we read for us. And I have it here. They have profaned my holy things. Why? because they have put no difference between the holy and profane. Don't bring profane to our churches. Be an instrument of God. Be a tool. Make those instruments be tool in your hands, their musicians, and praise God with your talents. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, sister. I have many questions still on this same subject. I think we can continue on our next program. And uh, we talk about drums and, and actually we, we not only talk about drums and we are not limiting ourselves, but we are, we are using what can be used as instruments and what is not to be used as instruments. And even the difference between tools and weapons. Thank you very much for your presentation. And thank you very much for your explanation also. And I'm, I'm sure our brethren are blessed to have these instructions and the guidelines and uh, maybe we, we will, we will, God willing, we, we are going to have another program on this subject and we continue uh, examining and uh, finding answers to many of our other questions, whereas I have more questions here on this, on this subject as well. So before we conclude today's program, I would like to invite you, uh, uh, invite you to join with me to have a word of prayer. Let's thank the Lord. Our most loving, gracious Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this moment that you have given us. Thank you, Father, for the instructions, the clear, uh, the counsels that were given us through the spirit of prophecy and through the Bible and helping the sister to be a blessing to us, Father, and she explained. Lord, bless her abundantly with wisdom, knowledge, and thy spirit. Bless her family. And Lord, thank you, Father, for all those who are watching this and all our viewers. Help all of us to have clarity in this subject, Father, so that we can worship thee, which will be pleasing to thy sight. Lord, all these mercies and pardon for our sins, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, viewers, for your participation. And we'd like to invite once again, please send in your questions and uh, any clarifications required in any area. Please let us know and uh, do write to us and talk to us. And we may accommodate your questions in our uh, next program or in the future. So thank you very much for your participation once again. And sister, thank you very much. we like to thank Sister Keras that uh, helping us to find answers to this subject and uh, until we see you next week god bless you god be with you amen amen